Abba, we just, uh, again, welcome everybody to Totally Tasty Torah. Uh, my name is Rabbi Peter Gaines. And again, uh, we are here to study and open your word. Father, we just ask that you pour into us through your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit, Lord. We just praise you. We ask that you be all over the words that we're studying here today in Deuteronomy in uh, lieu of the, uh, the feast of Shavuot today. And we lift you up and thank you. We ask, Lord, that you, uh, again, feed us the information we have, because more importantly than anything else, the information we get by reading your word is information we need to share. And you are inevitably going to put people in front of us that you want us to share with. And we never want to pass on those uh, those opportunities. So we praise you. We thank you. We lift you up. We also uh, lift you up ahead of time, Lord, and ask for you to touch everything that we do on this Shabbat. Lord, the, the praise and worship, everything that we do technically. Rabbi, as he brings the message today, actually it's Sophia today, I believe. And um, we just lift you up, be with us, pour into us. Lord, we seek everything there is to know about you. And we pray this in the precious name of Yeshua the Messiah. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, Jorge. Jorge, could you do the honor of kind of helping Libyan, and, uh, excuse me, Marta and uh, Wilson? Yeah, Espanol, por favor. I don't know here. We have people who speak in Espanol. Okay. So again, we are in uh, Deuteronomy 14. This is a variance from the normal uh, readings, but this is part of if you. Uh, is there anybody that doesn't have the listing of the readings, the weekly readings? If you're not a regular here, you may not have it. Okay. Right here. I need to get one from the feet when I come in. I don't have one either, Rabbi. Well, it's hard for me to pass it to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> but when you come in, which you're doing later, right? I'm on my way. All right. It's a good thing. <laughs> Um, so, again, if you're not familiar with that piece of paper, you have it with you now? No. Oh. 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 Thank you. Anybody else need one? Okay, so, again, uh, if you open it up, normally we are in the book of Numbers. Okay, so find on this piece of paper the book of Numbers, okay, in here. And it shows you the date where we are. Okay, so uh, today's date is May 27. So after that, it shows you that the reading for today is Deuteronomy 1422. See that, everybody? That is the normal parasha reading for the day. The next column over is the Haftarah reading. Okay, that those are the readings from the, the readings and the Psalms and the prophets. Okay, uh, in, in some points in history, Jews were told they were not allowed to read Torah. So they read the Haftarah. That's not half Torah. It's okay. <laughs> Haftarah. So, and then the last column is the Brit Hadasha, or the Gospel, or the Besarah in Hebrew, the Good News. Amen. It's the New Covenant. Okay, everybody with me? All right, great. So again, next week we'll be studying Nassau. Okay. All right, so again, 1422 is where we are. Um, this has to do with uh, tithing and remembering the Levite. And again, the Levites specifically, Levites specifically who, who what was their designation? And, and why were they appointed 
to do what they do. Sonny? They were the priests, okay? The high priest was called the Kohan Hagadol, okay? Kohan, Cohen, if you know anybody named Cohen, they're a direct descendant, okay? Um, but the Levites were, why were they chosen to be? To do the work of the temple. To do the work of the tabernacle, correct? All right, whether every time the tabernacle, the Lord decided to move, okay, and the, the Shekinah glory got up and moved, then the Levites had their very own specific stations that they needed to do. So each one was assigned a specific duty. But why, again, the Levites? Why not the Gershonites? Why not anybody else? Diane. Nice and loud so everybody can hear you. Yep. Precisely. Okay. So the Lord rewarded them for that reason. Okay. Everybody else, but they did not. All right. Let me ask you this, though. Who was the high priest? Aaron was the high priest. Why not Moses? Because Moses gave it up. Because he was a he was a stutterer. He didn't believe that he could do the work that God had called him to work. So God said no. And either will that's partially. He asked his brother to be with the boys. No, he didn't ask his brother. The Lord provided his brother. Right. Okay, and suggested because because Moses was complaining. You got the wrong guy. Okay, I, there's no way I'm going to go to see Pharaoh. Okay, I'm a wanted guy in Egypt, and you want me to go back there? All right, but there was another major reason why. He was a mother, and I think for the same reason that David was kind of like a good Precisely. Precisely. Okay. Nice and loud. Uh, Linda, one more time, please. Did they hear that? Okay. Did everybody hear Linda? Okay. Moses was not allowed to be the high priest because he was a murderer. Okay? Surprise? Yeah. We, I'm just wondering if my resident technician here, hang on one second, we'll see if we can adjust the, the speaker situation. Oh, where? The settings. Right. Yeah, it's probably for that. So we have to change your mic. Go back to where the settings were. Click more. Okay. Uh, Linda, say something. Linda, say something. Can you guys hear better? Give me a thumbs up. Can you hear Linda okay? Cedric, you say no? No, I cannot. I hear you fine. Okay, stand by one second. So that was the speaker. So go and change the mic. Like do the same thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, Jabber.
the interruption. Yeah. Okay. So, so same that side. Okay. All right. So we're good right here. Okay. All righty. Well, let's continue. All right. So we were talking about, and uh, Roberts and Linda talked about the fact that Moses was not the high priest because he had blood on his hands, but she also she also drew the analogy to King David. Okay, King David was uh, wanted to build the temple in Jerusalem, but could not do that. Uh, uh, the Lord said, "You've got blood on your hands." What do we know about King David? What was wrong with him? He sent the, the soldier to the front line, the one, the one, the one Uriah. 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 Uriah killed. Say again, Cedric. He had a Uriah killed. Well, he didn't. He had a Uriah kill. killed, he, killed because he arranged for him to be killed. Basically, he arranged for him to be killed. He moved him to the front line. Why? Because he wanted his wife. Because he wanted his wife. Uh, so he was not only a murderer, he was an adulterer. Okay. Double down. Double down. Okay. All right. So, uh, again, the Levites were chosen for what we said because they did not participate in the, uh, the events of the golden calf, the worshiping of the golden calf. I have a question, Rabbi. One sec, Libby. Who was in charge of that whole golden calf situation? Yeah. Aaron was. I have one thing to say about that. And he lied too. Okay. <laughs> okay. What? How did that happen? Okay. I think he was trying to appease them, but that was really a weird way to appease them, right? Well, again, they at the time at the time they were thinking that Moses was gone. He's up in the mountain for 40 days. They weren't figuring on seeing him again. Yeah, so I they, and, yeah. But Aaron's faith was stronger than that. To then become a priest, like if his faith was that, how, sometimes that part is really. Yes, and it's certainly on the list to ask him when we see it. Okay, Stephen. Could it also have been that because Aaron was a little afraid of them, they're going to band together, maybe like hack him or kill him? Or well, it doesn't say that though. Okay, I doesn't I don't think he was necessarily afraid. Uh, that's conjecture. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. Did somebody else have a question regarding that? What do the Hebrew uh, writings talk about? You know, the commentators. What do they say about that? Don't know. But Aaron not only got away with it there. Where else did he get away with uh, not receiving the ramifications of bad behavior? Against Moses, but um, uh, Miriam is the one that got Miriam, mm -hmm. the sister, Moses' sister, Aaron's sister, okay, they both were railing against Moses, who died and left you, King. Okay. Was Aaron with his cousin? So Aaron joined the cousin? No, 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 no. No, that was Kohai. Okay. Libby. Libby is right at the door. Someone She's at the door. Nobody has a hand up. Okay. A quick comment. I was just grateful for God's grace. But again, we need to keep that door shut as best we possibly can. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, what you see there about it is a hair style. He was able, sometimes it's so interesting because, I mean, for what Aaron did for that position and to have to be the leader and to then have to show the sons how to come into that position. And then you had Moshe, who was this strong willed, like that would never have been him, even though it looks like Moshe had more passion, more impulse. Maybe that's what got her trouble in the beginning, that impulse. Um, but it was amazing. That was forgiven for him. But that time on that rule, but that wasn't forgiven by Moshe. What was this? I don't know. Sometimes I mean, I, don't, I mean, but it's, it's important to be done. Right. Well, again, again, 
What's the good news that we can take away from all of this, Arturo? The good news is guys, we need to keep that door shut as we can. Right. So, all right. So all the people and all the saints and all the, the heroes of scripture, are, you're saying these weren't perfect people? <laughs> Libby. <laughs> this point but aaron lied too he did? he did come on <laughs> the high priest <laughs> really bugged me because he was like oh no the, the jewelry just turned into a cat right we just kind of assembled all the things we just threw it into the ground and <laughs> poof came out this <laughs> perfectly <laughs> Like there's, there's some very interesting people commentary on that whole scene and, and how far actually Aaron actually got because there was some talk that they were actually trying to resurrect one of the um one of the people that had just recently died while they were leaving the while they were going into Exodus. Okay. Like another like another rabbi that everyone was like very respected. And that whole thing was to bring him where did you read that? That's uh, some. It sounds like Talmud. Yeah, it's Talmud. Okay, so again, that's we we as much as there are interesting stories there, and like lots of hypotheses. Okay, just like the the crossing of the Red Sea, the sea didn't open up with one tunnel that the people passed through. The sea opened up as twelve tunnels, one for each tribe, wow. according to the Talmud. Yeah. Okay, and that that the walls of the ocean were translucent and that people could one tribe could see into the next into the next each one crossing in its own tunnel of water so read what god says read read, <laughs> read what god says <laughs> not what <laughs> but sometimes god inspires you have to be critical we have to ask for discernment because i yeah. do believe god gives people discernment and, and yeah there's no question it could be the calvary as well precisely there are some interesting thought-provoking questions and insights there absolutely i agree uh but again we gotta we gotta stick with what god says and not what man says amen okay uh okay let's read let's read again for the purposes of shavuot we are reading the special passage uh deuteronomy 14 22 do i have a reader Okay. Okay. You will surely set aside a tenth of all the yield of your seed that comes from the field year by year. You are to eat the tithe of your grain, your new wine, your oil, and the firstborn of your herd and flock before Adonai your God in the place he chooses to make his name dwell, so that you may learn to fear Adonai your God always. What's that last word? Always. 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 Go on. Now, suppose the way is too long for you, for you cannot carry the type because the place Adonai your God chooses to set his name, and his name is too far from you. That makes sense, but I'm doing it again. I'll do it again, 24. Now, suppose the way is too long for you, for you cannot carry the type because the place Adonai your God chooses to set his name is too far from you. Why would the tithe be too heavy to, to deal with and carry from where he needs to bring it? The tenth of the all the parts. Okay. Could be a multitude of different things. Okay. Could be an animal. Mm. All right. So again, let's read on. And I, your God, blesses you. Then you are to exchange the tithe for silver, bind up the silver in your hand, and go to the place that Adam, I, your God, chooses. You may spend the money for whatever your soul desires cattle, sheep, wine, strong drink, for whatever your soul asks for you. Then you'll eat there before Adam, I, your God, and you choice. You and your household, but you are not to neglect the Levite within the gates, so he has no portion or inheritance with you. Okay, again, the Levites were set aside. There were the priests, Levites, but then there was also all the the rest of the Levites who were specifically kind of servants working in the tabernacle 
Okay, they were not given any allotment. Okay, therefore the rest of the people took care of them. They didn't have any land specifically other than uh, you know where they actually lived, but nothing that they owned. Therefore, everybody else needed to take care of that. Let's go on. 28. At the end of every three years, you are to bring out all the tithe of your produce in that year and store it within your gates. Then the Levite, because he has no portion or inheritance with you, along with the outsider, the orphan and the widow within your gates, will come and eat and be satisfied, so that Adonai your God may bless you in all the work of your hands that you do. Okay. Again. <laughs> What does the last line say? I don't know, your God, what? Will bless you in all the work of your hand. Okay. So you've heard Rabbi David many times talk about if then. If you do good with what we have, whatever it is that we have, you're going to be blessed. Amen. There's a couple of wordy things, and wow, well, there's a lot of wordy things. That's not the way I said it, but you know, this point that, that struck me. Um, when they tithe, they were paid for that tithe. I thought that was interesting. They said, return, you know, change the tithe for silver, and you can spend it however you want. Okay, what they're saying is. Okay, if it's too heavy to carry, you can turn it into silver so you can carry it, but you're still going to give it and, and submit it as a tithe. Okay, um, that was the point. Well, they can. I mean, I guess they could sell the whole animal and a tenth of it gave us a tithe. A tenth of the money. They of get. the money that they get. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just bring it a little different. So if you have an ox, then it's you know, so you need to exchange it so you can't get the green and the this. So the ox sells for $1,000. Um, when you go into Jerusalem, you buy new ox for the sacrifice, and for myself, if I'm to consume that, I have to consume this part of it. I can't do the whole ox. So then, before I add more to the Okay, so no, but if if you got a thousand dollars for the ox, then you need to tie ten percent of that thousand. No, oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. And I've also said you go to the place the Lord tells you to go. To right. That's why that's why we're not there yet, but we're talking about the Shalosh Regalim. Okay. Uh, anybody want to translate that? What, Amy? Nice and loud. Required? Re Regalim, required. Okay, the three required feasts. $64,000 on a new Cadillac. Okay, <laughs> what are the three required feasts? There are seven Pesach. of them. Pesach, Passover, Shavuot. Shavuot. First feast, Sovereign. <laughs> 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 Sounds like Sukkot. And Sukkot. Sukkot is required of a, I mean, they're all everlasting, but Sukkot in Zechariah, I think it's that all nations will be required to go to Jerusalem to celebrate Sukkot. Correct. Okay. What was significant about Sukkot? Jesus was born. Thank you. You sure? Okay. Amen. Minor detail. Okay. <laughs> can celebrate his birthday. So it was the December? It was not December. It was not December. But again, the important thing about remembering that, and again, 
the important thing about remembering that is that if you follow the timeline, people want to know when you're talking to them about the timeline. The timeline is taken from the birth of cousin. Whose cousin? Yochanan. John the Presbyterian. Okay. okay, so in, in any case, no, no. So, no, seriously, John Yochanan the Immerser is what he was. Okay. Uh, so, but again, he was born six months prior. And if you follow that timeline, it brings us to Sukkot. Okay. They went to, they were ordered to go to Bethlehem for the, uh, for the census. But when they got there, okay, the place was booked. The Holiday Inn was filled. Okay. And the reason being is because it was Sukkot. And Sukkot typically commemorates, good morning, sir, uh, so, commemorates what? What is Sukkot? Tabernacles. tabernacles. What, are, what tabernacle? The ones in the wilderness for 40 years. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so they were commemorating that. Okay. So uh, it's safe to say that Mary and Joseph left late because by the time they got there, Maybe because it had nothing to do with it, that timing per se. The fact of the matter is, the whole thing was preordained to begin with, right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's read on. Okay. okay. Chapter, 15. chapter 15 is where we are in Deuteronomy. Okay. And this talks about Shemitah. Okay. And what, pray tell, is Shemitah? Letting the land lay rest. And how often are we supposed to do that? And how do you determine when the seven years is? So by the, um, the date and you um, divide, divide it. a year and divide it. Take the year and divide it by seven. So what year is this now? 5783 divided by seven gives us 826.14. If it ends in like one of decimals, then it's not. Precisely. If it's not a whole number, it's not Shemitah. So if you divided 820, 5782 last year by seven, you would have come out with a whole number. Last year was Shemitah. Okay. So 5783 plus seven brings us to. Next, the next Shemitah. Okay, but what do we know per the conjecture of Rabbi uh, Khan? Rabbi Khan wrote a lot of books. In fact, he's, he's provided some incredible insights uh, as to what's going on now with uh, the existing uh, president and, and uh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> let's not go there, but but I'm just saying uh, he's he's if you haven't read what's the name of oh Return of the Gods is the current book. Oof, exactly. Oh yeah. But what does he say about Shmita? What's significant? How do we know? Okay, again, it was a covenant that he made with the Israelites. You're going to have Shmita. Again, we repeat it, but it's worth repeating. When you have, when you celebrate Shemitah, you let the land lay fallow. Okay, you don't farm it. Whatever comes up out of the land is there for the orphan, for the widow, or for the stranger in the land. But of course, like everything else that they were commanded to do, did they do that? Next slide. And as a result of their stiffness, next, next entity. <laughs> as a result of that, what happened? Seventy years in Babylon. Thank you, Libby. Seventy years. Ten years for every year they disobeyed. They got seventy years in exile. And so if they were in Babylon, what happened to the land? They got a lot of rest. It got a lot of rest. <laughs> Precisely. Okay. 
So, and again, so it is. So, Rabbi, you said like the settlements that are currently in right now, even you know, the ones that ultra like Orthodox, they're not. They're doing the same thing. They're also ready for. The there are many. Uh, again, if you were in Israel today, okay, and it was Shmita, then if you drove down by uh, farmlands, you might see a sign that said, because the field is overgrown, we celebrate, we, we, there are some, I wouldn't say communities, but individuals uh, who are obedient to that command. Okay, but in generally speaking, no. But uh, then there are um, individuals who think, well, we don't have to, you know, do this, but we can, like somebody. We can turn a profit. Okay, we can turn a profit and we'll let rent out the land to an Arab. Uh, okay. It's the same thing like some people that observe Shabbat. They have people that are non-Hebrews come in and turn the lights on. Oh, yeah. and the whole world. Our shop is going. That's an interesting. I don't understand how people don't understand that. Like the whole idea is not to do it. So either you do it or you do it not. But don't. don't have They're not reading have exactly what you and I are reading our Torah, okay. right? Yeah, guys, we need hands. Okay, <laughs> you're going to speak. Please raise hands. Yes, Diane. What did Rabbi Khan say? Again, this is Rabbi Khan. I can't attest to totally, I mean, I know where personally I believe, okay, but uh, he said that other than the Israelites, somebody else made a Shemitah covenant with him, with the Lord. Yeah. Who? George Washington? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. Okay, thing. you can see that in the book. Uh, but it, per his conjecture, is that as a result of us not being obedient to Shemitah, then every seven years something catastrophic happens. Interesting. And if you look and for a, for a turning point like 9 11, that was Shemitah. And if you go back every seven years, there's something else. And if you go forward every seven years, there's something else. Usually it's 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 not necessarily that catastrophic, but it could be economic, usually. Okay, something impactful. Thank you, Susan. Yes, that's what the book says. Yes, Cedric. There's something that probably affects most of us in this room, and that's the cancellation of debts. Thank you. Then they're going to let me uh, <laughs> more than seven years. They won't be under They need to go ahead and, uh, you know, get out. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, maybe you can talk to Joe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Moving right along. Let's pick this up, please. Okay. So times forever. Shmita is forever. That's what I'm asking. Yes. 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 Every seven years. Wow. Yeah, we lost some people on. Okay. All right. Um, that's Rebecca from New York. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right. Shoftim, uh, excuse me. That's where we're 15. Shmita. At the end of every seven years, you have to cancel debts. This is how you have to cancel debts. Every creditor is released from the old man who is made. You must not force his neighbor or his brothers to repay. The automatic debt cancellation has been postponed. The foreigner you may force, but your hand is to release whatever your brother owes you. However, there should be no poor among you. The Adonai will surely bless you in the land. Adonai your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess. If only you would carefully listen to the voice of Adonai your God, being careful for all these mitzvah, then I am commanding you today. So can I you reread what you just read, that sentence? Yes. If, only, if only? And Rebecca, if, can you hear Sheila okay? 
it comes in on and off. Sometimes I hear her and then sometimes not. Okay. If only you would carefully listen to the voice of Adam of your God, being careful to do all his mitzvah, then I am command that that I am commanding you today. Adam and I your God will bless you as you promised you, that you will lend to many nations and not borrow. You will rule over many nations, but they will not rule over you. If there is a poor man among you, any of your brothers within any of your gates in the land that Adam and I your God has given you, you are not to harden your heart or shut your mind to stand for the against his poor brother. Mm -hmm. Rather, he must surely open your hand to him, and you must surely lend him enough for his need, whatever he is lacking. Watch yourself, for there is no one more than him in his heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of canceling debt, is due, and your eye is evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing. Then he may call out to Adam against you, and it will be a sin upon you. You must surely give to him, and your heart is not to be grieved when you give to him. For because of this thing, Adonai your God will bless you in all your work and in every undertaking of your hand. Can I hear an amen? Okay, if then, if we are obedient to these mitzvot, these commandments, yes? Okay, so Diane. So does this affect like interest rates, like uh, with respect to when during a certain year period a, a loan is made? Like if you, if you, the answer is yes. Okay, <laughs> if I understand you correctly. Exactly. And according to this, as I used to say in my English class, it don't matter. Okay. All right. It is what it is. It's at the end of seven years. It's done. Okay. All right. Here, here you go, Michael. Okay, so um, okay, so again, you must surely give to him. Okay, these are people who are in need. Okay, obviously this is an ideal situation, but the ideal situation is being obedient to him. So we know that the world is not, but we need to be obedient to him in every way, shape, form possible. Because as a result of our obedience, the result is blessings. Or now, amen? So okay. the, one, the one that had the debt owed to him didn't really have to worry about, oh my goodness, my seventh year's coming, I'm gonna have to cancel his debt because God was providing him. Yeah, precisely. Precisely the same way. Okay, we have we get to let's get to the rest of Shemitah. Okay, go ahead. Eleven. Eleven. So there will never be poor people among the earth. Therefore, I am commanding you to say you must surely open your hands to your brothers, to your needy and poor in your land. If your fellow Hebrew, a man or woman, is sold to you and serves you six years, then in the seventh year you are to set him free. When you set him free, you are not to send him away empty-handed. You are to surely provide for him from your flock and threshing floor and wine press. As Adonai, your God, has blessed you, you are to give to him. You will, you will remember that you were a slave in his country. Adonai, your God, redeemed you. Therefore, I will not to you this day. Now to tell you, I will not go away from you, because you love you in your household, since you dwell off with you. Then you are to take it from all... So he's stuck to the doorpost forever. Is that right? <laughs> Hung up by his ear. <laughs> he has a pierced ear. Okay. With probably with an earring in it. Okay. But again, that's a voluntary situation. So these people were not slaves per se. Better term would be employee, okay, that you are as the master supposed to take care of. This is not somebody there for your whipping purposes. Understand? So, so when they talk about slavery here, okay, remember you were slaves in Egypt, okay, you are not to treat them the same way in any way, shape, or form. 
okay, mm-hmm. because they don't have what you have, what they have, okay, you can still treat them, provide for them, okay, and if you as a slave decide this is a good deal, I got a place to sleep at night, I got three squares a day, uh, and I'm going to hang in because I got my wife and my kids to take care of, we're going to stay here. Paul. I think the scripture is, that's not the past I called you to, to take care of the widow and the orphan. That just yep. was resonating there. Precisely. Okay. Uh, take it all. Okay, verse 18. Is that right? 17. And to you, your female slave, you are to do the same. It should not seem hard to you when you set him free from you, for he has served you six years, double the value of a hired worker. So Adonai will bless you in all that you do. Continually blessing. Okay, do you comprehend the full meaning of everything? All you have to do is follow No biggie, right? No. <laughs> all right, but the world makes it up real problem for some reason because they decide that what they want to do is more valuable than what he wants us to do. All right, that's just pretty well sh- Libby? You have to obey, you have to trust. Well, and not only that, you got to read what it says. Okay, because most of the people who are pressing against us, pressing against the, the world of believers, have not one clue what this book says. You're right. They don't learn. <laughs> In mine was class. You don't learn today. <laughs> Diane. So the, the rule about letting the, the land lay fallow, does that apply like if you have a garden in your house? Yeah. Anything that grows that like produces, you know, yeah, exactly. If you're living off of that, okay. But the, the, the point is, too, is, um, again, if, in fact, you let in the seventh year the land lay fallow, produce will come up out of that land. Okay, again, it's for the widow, for the orphan, for the stranger in the land. But he says, what if you do that? What happens? Bless you. He'll bless you not only for being obedient, but what, uh, what is the blessing? Well, Laura, nice and not what? The ground, will produce. the ground will produce, okay, providing for you for those years that you that you didn't till the soil, right? And the following year as well, you're going to get an abundanza. Okay, you have to say that in Italian, okay, in honor of my wife. Okay. <laughs> Rabbi, um, Rabbi David's favorite. Well. Ask what? Boaz. Ask Boaz. Yes. Uh-huh. Boaz and the story of Ruth. Okay. So, okay, let's pick it up. 19. All the firstborn males that are born in your herd and your flock, you are to consecrate, consecrate to Adonai your God. You are to do no work with the firstborn of your herd or shear the firstborn of your flock. You are to eat it before Adonai your God year after year in the place Adonai chooses, you and your household. <clears throat> but if it has any blemish, if it is lame or blind or has any serious blemish, you are not to sacrifice it to Adonai your God. You are to eat it within your gates, the unclean and the clean together, just as they eat the gazelle or deer. Only its blood you are not to eat. You must pour it out on the ground like water. Because... Life is in the blood. Amen. Let's go on. 16, please. The three harvest festivals. Shalosh Regalim. Okay, that's what it is. The three required feasts. We just named them. Okay. Yes. It's like the top three, yeah. If you have seven, and there's like the top three, and it's like you have four. Correct. Do they call those the high holidays? This, well, no, the high holidays generally refers to like Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. Okay. Uh, but these are the, the three required feasts when you are required to go to the place that God designates to worship. 
i.e. Yosef and Miriam going to Bet Lechem. Okay, that some place Bet Lechem. Translation, house of bread, because he is the bread of life. Okay, 16, chapter 16. Stephen would like to read. Observe the month of Aviv and keep the Passover to Adonai your God. For in the month of Aviv, Adonai your God brought you out from Egypt by night. You were to sacrifice the Passover offering to Adonai your God in the flock, in the herd, in the place Adonai chooses to make his name dwell. You were not to eat hametz with it. For seven days. Okay, hametz, leaven, translation, sin. Okay, great. Thank you. For seven days, you are to eat matzah with it, the bread of affliction, for you came out from the land of Egypt in haste. Do this so that all the days of your life, you will remember the day when you came out from the land of Egypt. No hamas should be seen with you in all your territory for seven days, and none of the meat you sacrifice on the evening of the first day may be left overnight until the morning. You may not sacrifice the Passover offering within any of your gates that Adonai your God is giving you. Rather, at the place Adonai your God chooses to make his name dwell, there you will sacrifice the Passover offering in the evening at sunset, the time of your coming out from Egypt. You are to cook and eat it at the place Adonai your God chooses. Then you will turn around in the morning and journey home. For six days you are to eat matzah. 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 On the seventh day, there's to be a solemn gathering to Adonai your God. On it, you are to do no work. Okay, so again, there is the Passover, but then, then there is the Feast of Matzah. Okay, we celebrate them together. It's generally how it's been passed down to us. Okay, but how many of you were at our last Passover? Okay. Again, we use the matzah for a variety of different things to commemorate. Okay, mm -hmm. that which they made in the desert because uh, they were escaping and they didn't have time to let the bread rise. There was no yeast, mm -hmm. right? But it has a variety of different implications. Okay, they call it the bread of affliction, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so again, uh, how else do we, we use the matzah in a, in a pretty important way during Pesach? Afikom. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Very good. Okay. Growing up, I always thought it was Hebrew. Right. So <laughs> nobody said nothing. Okay. You'll forgive me. I used to teach English. So, um, again, it is a Greek word, afikomen. It's the piece that you break in part. You wrap it in a linen cloth, hide it away. Okay, everybody understand the implications? Okay, the kids go out, find it, the contest, bring it back for a ransom. All right? Well, we did that during Yes, we, we did that during Passover. And you got weak. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, but again, the Greek word afikomen translates He has come. And when you say you grew up with that, you were. I didn't. That. No, no, no. Never. I was reformed. Reformed. But you weren't messianic. I was not messianic. And that's what it means. He has come. I, but I didn't know that. You know, when I found that out, when I moved. <laughs> Ladies, okay. I found that out when I moved to Florida and I went to a Baptist church. <laughs> and the pastor there, extremely knowledgeable, this guy did, to do a sermon on Africa. <laughs> okay. okay. He will talk to you anywhere he, anywhere he wants to get your attention. Afikomen, just like it sounds. A F I K O M E N. Okay. Again, it's Greek. 
You probably thought it was uh, Hebrew, it, has cold, cold. Well, it didn't matter. It was part of the Passover. In my house, when you celebrated Passover, okay, uh, typical with lots of people who really, you know, they blow it off because, you know, everybody comes over and celebrates Passover and everybody has a Haggadah, the book, the telling, right? Okay, you get three pages in and my mother would say, let's see. <laughs> Like, you gotta... yeah. <laughs> Who's getting cold? And, and, and it wasn't Manischewitz, okay? It, it, it might have been beef eaters, okay? Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Fortunately, praise God, she came to faith. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, um, okay, Nine. where were we? Nine? Mm -hmm. Seven weeks. Seven weeks you would count for yourself. From the time you begin to put the sickle to the standing grain, you will begin to count seven weeks. Then you will keep the feast of Shavuot to Adonai your God with a measure of a free will offering from your hand, which you would give according to how Adonai your God blesses you. So you will rejoice before Adonai your God in the place Adonai your God chooses to make his name dwell. You, your son and daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, Orphan and widow in your midst. You will remember that you were a slave in Egypt and you were to take care and do these statutes. You were to keep the feast of Sukkot for seven days after gathering the produce from your threshing floor and wine press. So you will rejoice in your feast, you, your son and daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, orphan and widow within your gates. Seven days you will feast to Adonai your God in the place he chooses. Because Adonai, your God, will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hand. And you will be completely filled with joy. Amen. Go on. Three times a year, all your males are to appear before Adonai, your God, in the place he chooses. At the Feast of Matzah, the Feast of Shavuot, and the Feast of Sukkot. No one should appear before Adonai empty-handed. The gift of each man's hand, according to the blessing Adonai your God has given you. Amen. Oh. Amen. So, um, so, it, so God made the cut mandatory even back then. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, even back then, Sukkot, again, when Yosef and Mary got to Bethlehem, and they saw that they couldn't get a hotel room. Okay, what did they do? No manger. There was no manger, no barn. It's called a sukkah. They built a sukkah, which is what everybody does, which are the huts that people lived in in the desert for 40 years. It's a little... Sukkot. Precisely. <laughs> exactly right. Do you think that sometimes translations get it wrong? A little bit. Okay. They do it for several reasons. Number one, because it gets mistranslated. And in many cases, uh, whether it's on purpose or not on purpose, they want to steer it away from anything that was Jewish. We all know Jesus was a Catholic. <laughs> Okay, does everybody understand? Okay, so again, he was born six months after his cousin, Yohanan, all right, which would have brought us to September sometime. Okay, he, they, they built a sukkah because they couldn't get a room somewhere. All right, and they turned over a food storage container to put the baby in. How do they know Yohanan was born in March? Okay, we have to, we can look at the timeline here. We should go back and look at the word. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what else? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, December. Yeah. Sook of the same as Booth. Booth, Feast of Booth. Yeah. 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 Voting Booth. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, so, Again, the Feast of Matzah, Shavuot, Sukkot, okay, uh, three times a year. You appear before Adonai in the place that he chooses. That's really important, okay, at the Feast of Matzah. But again, 
when we typically celebrate, like when we celebrate Pesach, not this past year, but the year before, we had it at uh, Coral Ridge Presbyterian. It, it was awesome. We had it on a Thursday night. If it coordinated with Passover, I don't remember that it did. But the reason why we do it, as my dear rabbi, Rabbi Adrian would say, we'll celebrate Passover in front of skinhead Nazis if we have to. <laughs> okay. Which kind of, in my mind, shuts it down to the cop. The whole purpose of us doing what we're doing is so that people would understand the real story. In my house growing up, there was no Jesus and no Yeshua in the Passover. They had no clue about anything like that. Okay, you and I know from reading the word and uh, is that Yeshua was all over the Passover. Yeshua was all over from the beginning. From the very first line, it says, let there be light. First line of scripture says what? In the beginning. Bereshit, in the beginning, God. And the word for God in Hebrew, Elohim. God made up of multiple parts. We stand up and we face east toward Jerusalem and we say, Shema Yisrael Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. The Lord is one. One made up of multiple parts. And we're going to stand up and say We believe. We it believe, is. but we're going to understand it. It's a well, mystery. It's a mystery. Well, again, the whole idea of uh, the triune God is not an easy thing to digest. No. In fact, a dear, dear, very close friend of ours just published a book uh, called The Real God of Israel. Is that the right title? Mm -hmm. Okay, just came out on uh, Amazon. Uh, in fact, Susan was the editor. Okay, but uh, they were monotheistic, and those that resist the Trinity say, "Well, that sounds like polytheism." Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain. It, it is hard to explain. It's hard for the human mind to comprehend. Uh, and at the same, thank you. Multiple parts. Yeah, Cedric. Precisely. That's the first thing. Again, Moses is standing in front of the bush and he says, tell me your name. And he says, he didn't say I am. That's what money say. Okay, what did he say? 
I will be who I will be, meaning I'm going to take on any form that I need to take on in order to get your attention. Here, you're, you're talking to a burning bush here. Right. He's got to, he's got to read this, Cedric. Right. But even if he reads the, he, But even if you read the Quran, if you read the Quran, it's about Jesus Christ. But the, most of them don't take the time anymore. And my Jewish brethren take the time to read it. Yes. Correct. Okay, guys. Time out. Yes. No, it was just a statement. We even have our, like somebody back here said, we have our own part. <clears throat> but our, don't we actually work in different capacities? I am female, but I am also a wife. I am also a mother. Yep. I am a sister. Still the same person. But these are exactly. Okay. You guys, I'm over time. I got to run. Okay, the drummer's got to go rehearse. So uh, let's pray. Father, we just praise you and we thank you for this time, Lord. Your word is profound. Help us. We're just scratching the surface, Lord. Help us to dig deeper and drill down and have a deeper understanding of who you are and your character and what it is that you want for us, Lord. We just lift you up and exalt you. Thank you for pouring into us. Thank you for this rich conversation, Lord. We just ask that it never end. Lord, if we could spend weeks, days, months, all of these times together just pouring over your word, Lord, what a joy it would be. So, Lord, use us in the course of this coming week. Lord, use us in the course of this service. Help us to be the persons that you have described to hear in your word, Lord, so that we can be all that you want us to be. The blessings will pour out. We just lift you up and thank you in the precious name of Yeshua, Yeshua, our Messiah, and our righteousness. Amen. Amen and amen.